Hello, my name is Naive Libertarian Politics, and today I'm going to do episode 4 of the History of the Republican Party series. Today we will be going uh, roughly from where we left off, around 1904, 1908, 1912, really, 1912, and we will be going really to the end of the fourth party system. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So first we have you know, the Wikipedia page for uh, the fourth party system, uh, as we always do, to represent the party system that we're currently in. So we're going to go right up. And we're going to go to um, this, uh, this, this election, which is the 1912 election. And this, um, I chose to use this to represent what I believe was the beginning of the end of the transitionary period that was the Progressive Era. Um, it, it all ended when William Taft beat Theodore Roosevelt, and Theodore Roosevelt created his own political party. That's when it all started. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, he lost the Republican nomination for president. And uh, then Theodore Roosevelt, or th yeah, Theodore Roosevelt had lost the public nomination to his protege, William Taft, William Howard Taft, and so he created the Progressive Party, which re represented his views, and he uh, and he he won eighty eight votes, uh, outdoing his pro his former protege, but uh, he he uh, did not he did not win, and it really shows the beginning of the end for the Progressive Party. And by by actually by 1920, it had all all fizzled out. Um, you can see here, it, it it dissolved in 1920. It really really died really eight years after it was founded because it had no it had no support because because it really killed progressivism. I mean, it's possible that if if progressivism had not formed as if the progressives had not formed their own party, uh, they'd be doing they'd be doing well uh, even into the 1920s, but. Um, they always did not do very well because uh, the the party dissolved, and that really showed almost an end of the progressive era. Which, uh, yeah, I mean, they were so progressive that, l that l landed later, which we'll get into uh, in a moment. Uh, like there was one here, I'm Johnson, who was uh, a senator. He stayed on as a progressive, not a member of the progressive party, but he was a progressive Republican for a very long time. Um, <clears throat> you can see he he was even the the uh, vice presidential candidate in 1912. So yeah, let's get straight into 1920 election. Warren G. Harding, uh, many believe he was elected for his looks because this was actually the first election. This may sound a little, uh, an, a little, a little uh, bigoted, you might say, but um, there's a theory that people say that it maybe just be a joke, but uh, this was actually the first election women could vote, and he was supposedly a handsome man so some people say that he was elected based upon his looks only, which uh, it's, it's a it's a funny it's a funny joke it's a funny concept, but you know it's possible. Uh, he was he was a, he was a relatively um, establishment to the for the time Republican, pro tariff. He signed. He was he didn't. He was not real power. He wasn't really that special. He he put he wasn't that great of a president. I mean, he didn't do a lot that was very important, uh, but he was he was a pretty normal president. He signed this, the tariff bill, which uh, if you look over here, raised tariffs a significant amount. You wouldn't see another raise like that until Smoot-Hawley in, in 1930, which I would I would say led to the Great Depression, but um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Harding would die, go on to die in 1923, which would lead to Calvin Coolidge running, uh, becoming the becoming the the president, and would uh, run in twenty twenty four and win. Um, yeah, <clears throat> uh, you can see here Robert M. La Follette. He was uh, he was I don't know if it's Follette, but it's Follette. He he was a member. He was he had founded his own party, or at least was the leading member of the part of the, the progressive. He was actually called the Progressive Party. He was a progressive, or uh, um, similarly to Roosevelt, really a progressive Republican, um, and he had founded his own party, uh, and he was able to get Wisconsin as, as that's all. But Calvin Coolidge, he was the beginning of the libertarian economical era of the Republican Party, which would go on for quite a while. You could, at least twenty years, which is quite an accomplishment, um, the libertarian era, as you might call it. But uh, he was. He was a, a anti-tax president. You can go down here. He was he 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 advocated sci He advocated for the person who advocated scientific taxation, which said 
tax seasons is cre increased, the government will receive more money, or that receipts will um will increase. Um, and you you can even see right here that uh, tax tariffs really immediately went down. He was really the beginning of the libertarian era. Um, he left a lot of his his uh his regulations, a lot of his regulations and trade stuff to uh, Herbert Hoover, who would go on to become the next president of the United States and would d undisputedly lead to the Great Depression, but we'll get that into the next video. Um, and he, and it was really with him, it was really with him, uh, Herbert Hoover, he killed the, um, the fourth party system, but I'll get into that in the next video. Uh, but the thing you need to take away from this video is that um, the Progressive Party, back in 1912 when it formed, killed the Progressive Movement. It 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 was it poisoned the Progressive Movement to die only eight years later. And what blossomed from the Progressive Movement was the Libertarian uh, Republican Movement, which which solidified with Calvin Coolidge in 1924 with his election, with his technically re-election, but it, it solidified with his uh, re-election and. Uh, it, and while Calvin Coolidge was surrounded by, um, uh, presidentially wise, he was surrounded by big government type people with Herbert Hoover in front of him and uh, Harding behind him. You would see go on with Alf Landon, Dewey. You could even say there's arguments for um, even uh, Dwight Eisenhower to be a libertarian, at least economically low tax people like that. And he, <clears throat> Calvin Coolidge, was the beginning. He was. You could say that he was the fizzle into the uh, libertarian economic movement of the Republican Party, which you don't, you ha you will not see go away for a very long time. And uh, yeah, what you need to take away from this is that um, the uh, the progressive the progressive movement, the progressive Arabs, uh, sowed the seeds for its own destruction with the progressive party, and that in um, <coughs> and that in. And then out of the Progressive Party formed the Libertarian Movement, which fizzled in and uh, did not win a few elections, but eventually would win and then go on to be the dominant leaders of the Republican Party. Um, yeah. So, um, this is just my opinion. Take everything with a grain of salt. My name is Naive Libertarian Politics. Focus on the naive. I'm not, as you say, I'm not that politically literate, but, um, uh, yeah, take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, expect videos to come in the future. Uh, I will probably not be making many videos uh, this week. I'll try to s squeeze maybe one or two in, but uh, don't expect too many. Um, yeah, but after after this week, I should I should be up and running, making videos hopefully every day. But uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.